Good day folks, welcome to my beginner's guide for the DJI Mavic Mini. DJI just released this ultralight, ultra portable drone that is the perfect little drone for beginner pilots. This video is for people who have never flown a drone before. We're going to go over everything step by step in great detail. If you're a seasoned pilot, you might want to go ahead and skip this video as there probably won't be anything new for you in it. If you're thinking about getting your first drone, the DJI Mavic Mini is a great choice. It weighs under 250 grams, so you don't have to worry about all the regulations that most countries have in place. It comes in at a great price, but yet it's very very capable and you can produce some really stunning results with it. So let's just jump right in and get started. So in my beginner's guide for the DJI Mavic Mini, we're going to get into a lot of detail and cover every aspect of flying. We're going to go over all the hardware that comes with both the base package and the Fly More combo. So whether you have the Fly More combo or the base package, you can still follow along. However, if you do have the base combo, some of the hardware we're going to be talking about here won't be relevant to you. Now this video could get a little bit long because there is a lot to cover. So in front of me here, I have everything that comes in the Fly More combo for the Mavic Mini. So let's just kind of discuss what we have here. Uh, first off, we have the case. We have two charging cables, we have the drone itself, we have a remote, we have a charging hub, we have three batteries, we have some extra control sticks, there are already some control sticks in the remote and we'll get to that here in a minute. We have a little mini screwdriver for changing props, we have some spare props, we have three data cables that connect from the remote to our phone and we'll go over that here in a little bit too. We have some prop guards, now if you just have the base kit you're just going to have the drone, the remote, one battery the data cables, spare props, and your charging cable. I'm going to clear my desk here so we can focus on one item at a time. So we're going to start with the drone here. Now one of the main features of this drone is that it is only 249 grams. That's very important in many different countries because that's usually where regulations start to kick in. For example here in Canada at 249 grams you don't have to have your pilot certificate and you don't have to register the drone. And many other countries have very similar regulations. So if you've just received your kit, your drone is going to be covered in stickers, so you should go ahead and remove them at this point. Another feature of the Mavic series is that it is a foldable drone. So let's go ahead and we will unfold it now. You always start with these front legs and you pull them out first. And the reason you do the front legs first, if you unfold the back ones first, you can see you can no longer get the front ones out. The back arm will block the front arm from coming out. So you always want to unfold the front arms first, and then the back arms will fold down and out just like that. So let's take a little quick look around the drone here. At the bottom here we have our power button. We can also use that button to check the battery level. If we press it once you can see the LEDs light up and tell us how much battery power is in that battery. On the front here is our camera. It's a 2.7k camera and it has a three axis gimbal to keep your footage stable. At the bottom here we have an LED status light and that'll give us different information about what the drone is doing. Above that we have a micro USB charging port. Beside that we have a micro SD card slot and that's where we put our memory in. Right above that is a door and that's where we will install the batteries. There's many different types of memory cards that will work with the Mavic Mini. I'll include some links down below in the description to ones that I recommend to use with it. So to insert the memory we're going to make sure we have the graphic facing up and we're just going to slide it into the little memory card slot there and then press it in. Once you hear a click you'll know that it's inserted and locked in properly. So let's set the drone off to the side here and now we're going to take a look at the remote. So this is the remote here that we'll be using to pilot the Mavic Mini. It has a really nice compact portable design. It makes it easier for packing in different camera bags. You can see here that we have removable sticks that are off right now. On the side here we have a charging and data port. That's how we charge the remote and that's also how we connect it to our smartphone to get a visual feed of what we're filming. On the back of the remote here we have our antennas and they fold up just like that. On the back here we have a dial and that's how we control the pitch of the gimbal. We have a button to start recording videos and we have a button to take photos. On the front of the remote we have a return to home button. If we press and hold it that will initiate a return to home and the drone will come back to where it took off from. And then on the other side here we have our power button. These two arms here fold out and that's where we'll be mounting our phone. You can see there that's where we also store the sticks for the controller. They just pop out and they screw in just like that. Now no matter whether you purchase the Fly More combo or the base kit, you're going to get these three data cables. And this data cable is how we're going to connect the remote to our phone. Now all the cables at one end have a micro USB connector and that's what connects to the remote. At the other end is where they're different. One has a lightning connector, 
one has another micro USB connector, and one has USB-C. Now you only need to use one of these cables, so you'll just have to choose which one is right for your smartphone. For me, I'm using an iPhone, so I will be selecting the one with the lightning connector. So to connect it to the remote, we're going to take the micro USB end and we're going to plug it into that data port there. Now it's especially important when plugging this cable into the remote to line up the little slot that's inside. Usually with micro USB ports, they're angled so you can visually see which way you're plugging it in. For some reason, DJI has made it square, so theoretically you could put it in both ways. If you do end up putting it in the wrong way, you're going to break that little pin inside. So just make sure you double check to make sure you have it lined up properly. We'll just press it in, just like that. Now at the other end here, you can see we have our lightning connector ready to be plugged into an iPhone. Now we are going to go over that in a minute and get our phone connected, but before we do anything, we should get everything charged up. Now to check the battery level of your remote, we just press once on the power button. You can see there we have LEDs to signify how much charge is in it. I have three bars, so that means I'm at 75%. So now let's talk about charging the drone. Like I mentioned, if you purchase the Flymore combo, you're gonna get a charging hub and you're gonna get three batteries. If you purchase the base kit, you're gonna have one battery. If you bought the Flymore combo kit or you bought the base kit, the way you charge your batteries is a little bit different and I'm gonna go over both methods. So first of all, in the Flymore kit, you get this charging hub. This charging hub is actually really handy and I'm gonna talk about all of its features. Now, if you have purchased the base kit, you can purchase extra batteries and this charging hub separately. Personally, myself, I usually recommend having at least two batteries. You'll find once you get into full swing and you're flying one battery is just not enough. I'll include links down below in the description of this video where you can purchase more batteries and this charging hub independently. So to put the batteries in the charging hub so we can start charging it we're going to make sure that the leads are facing up and lined up with the leads on the charging hub and we'll just put them in one at a time. Once they're in the charging hub, they're locked in, and they're in there fairly securely. There's a little button on the bottom there, and when you want to remove the batteries, you have to press that button in, and they slide right out. I showed you how to check the level of the batteries when you have a battery installed in the drone, but you can also use the charging hub to check the level of all your batteries. There's a button on the side there, you just press it, and you can see all the LEDs are going to illuminate to let you know what the charge is. This charging hub also acts as a carrying case. You can now throw this whole hub right in your bag. It keeps your batteries safe and keeps them from rolling around in your camera bag. Another nice feature is you can see we have a USB-A port. So when you have batteries plugged into the charging hub, this whole unit essentially becomes a power bank. You can now plug any USB chargeable device into the USB-A port and it will charge up. You can charge up things like smartphones. You can even recharge your remote by plugging into the USB-A port there. So now to charge up the batteries that's in the charging hub, we're going to use the power brick that comes with the kit. You can see there we have a USB-A port on one end. We're going to take the included cable, we're going to plug it in. We're going to take the micro USB end and plug it into the side of the charging hub. And then you're going to plug that into any wall socket. So I'm going to go ahead and plug mine in right now. And uh, you're going to notice a couple things as it starts. Right now the charging hub is analyzing the batteries that are installed. You can see here that these four LEDs are illuminated. That means that center battery is fully charged. Over here you can see these LED lights are blinking. That means it's now charging that battery. If all three batteries are completely drained, it's not going to charge all three at once. What it's going to do, it's going to analyze the batteries and start charging the one that has the most charge in it first and then do the other ones in succession. And the reason it does that is it gets you up and flying a lot quicker. For example, if this battery was at 70 cent and these two were at 20 percent, it's going to charge up that 70 percent battery first and that way you can pull it out and get back flying while it continues to charge the other batteries. So in that aspect, it's really handy and you don't have to have all three batteries in for this charging hub to work. You could have one battery in it or two batteries in and it will still continue to charge and that allows you like I said to pull a battery out and get back flying. Now if you didn't purchase the Flymore combo you have to charge your batteries directly via the drone. So I'll show you here how to install the batteries and then how to charge it. We're just going to lift up the back door and we're going to take our battery. Again we're going to line up the leads. You can see the leads there at the top. Just going to push it in until it clicks and then shut the back door. Again, you're going to take your power brick and plug in the included white cable. We're then going to take the micro USB end and then we're going to plug it into the back of the drone into the micro USB port. Again, make sure you have it aligned the right way and then it plugs in just like that. If we flip the drone over here, it's going to give us the same LEDs to show us it's charging and that way we'll know when it's done. So to charge our remote, we're going to use the same power brick and cable that we use to charge our drone batteries. So to charge our remote, we're going to unplug that data cable at the top there and then we're going to take the charging cable and again, make sure it's lined up. We'll plug it in and there you can see the LEDs give us the charging status. 
So we've got our remote charged up, we've got our drone batteries charged up, and we're almost ready to fly. There's a couple more things we need to do first before we can get into the air. Mainly what we have to do is download the companion app for the Mavic Mini and then connect our phone to the remote. So for the Mavic Mini, DJI has created a brand new app called the DJI Fly app. You can see it there listed on my phone. Some of DJI's apps for their other drones can be very complex. So what they've done is they've made a very simplified version. The new app is very simple to use, very streamlined. It's got a lot of tutorials built into it, and it makes it easy for new pilots to get up and flying quickly. So once you've got it downloaded, we can go ahead and mount our phone in the remote controller. Basically what we want to do is connect the lightning port or a USB-C port depending on what cable you have installed. We're going to plug it into the phone just like that. And then it's just a matter of lining up your phone in those grooves. You can see there that it fits in there nicely and it's actually very secure once it's installed. So now at this point we've got our phone installed and ready to go. We have the app there ready to go. So what we're going to do is power on the remote and we're going to power on the drone and we're going to let them connect to each other. So the first thing we're going to do is power on the remote and to do that we're going to do a double press on the power button and by that I mean we're going to do a quick press on it and then we're going to do a long press. While we're doing the long press you're going to see these LED lights go up one at a time until it powers on. So a quick press and then a long press. You can hear that audible sound once it's been powered on. Now what it's going to do here, these lights are going to continue blinking until it's connected to the aircraft. Once it's connected to the aircraft, these lights will go solid. Now to power on the aircraft, we're going to do the same as a remote. We're going to do a double press, a really quick one, and then a long press. When you power it on, two things are going to happen. You're going to see these propellers move a bit and kind of jostle a bit. Don't be alarmed, it's just doing a motor check. You're also going to hear an audible sound signifying that it's powered on. When you power it on, the status light's going to be yellow and blinking. When it is connected to the remote, like I said, this will be solid and stop blinking and that LED status light will turn green and just do a slow blink. So let's go ahead and power it on now. Single press and then a long press. So if you can see there, that's now blinking green and these lights here are no longer blinking. That means the two are now connected. So at this point, we can now go ahead and launch the DJI Fly app and we're here at the main screen. Now the screen you're seeing here is gonna be different once the official version is released. Like I said, this is still a pre-release version. Basically at the top here, we have two options. If we click on it, you can see it brings up a map and you can see here, it shows us areas where there's airports and places we shouldn't fly. There is geofencing built into the drone, so if you're in a spot where you can't fly, it's not legal to fly, the drone just won't take off. The other place at the top there, you can see it says aerial photography places nearby. That's going to be a nice place where you can go in and get some ideas of where you can fly in your area. At the bottom here is our album. If we click on it, it's going to bring up all the media that we've filmed. There's an option there for SkyPixel. It's basically a place where you can show off your photography. Now, if this is your very first DJI drone, a couple things are going to happen at this point once you've launched the app. The first thing is you're going to have to create an account and activate the drone. Before you can fly this drone, it needs to be activated. It will prompt you on the screen to log in. If you don't have an account, Account, it'll allow you to create an account. Once you've created your account, it will then prompt you to activate the drone. That process only takes a few minutes. Uh, the next thing, and this is very important, it's definitely something you don't want to skip. A message will pop up right away asking you to update the firmware of the drone and possibly the remote controller. Those firmware updates are super important. They add functionality, they fix problems. So definitely take the time and install the firmware update. It can take upwards of 10 minutes. It's very easy to do and it walks you through step by step. Once you've gone ahead and activated the drone and you've updated the firmware, you're gonna notice that we have this blue button down here in the bottom right hand corner that says go fly. That signifies everything is ready, the drone is connected to the remote, everything is good to go. When we're ready to take a flight, that's all we do. We just click on it and it's gonna launch into the DJI Fly app. So now let's talk about flying the drone. You can fly this drone indoors and you can fly it outdoors. Now it's very recommendable if you're going to be flying it indoors to install the propeller guards. That'll protect people or pets that you might have in your house, but it also protects the drone if you accidentally hit a wall. They're definitely a good thing to have on while you're learning to fly. Now I'm going to point out a few things here before we fly. The drone has different technologies built into it to keep it in position while flying, both indoors and outdoors. When you're flying outdoors, it's going to connect to GPS satellites and that allows it to hold its position when you have your hands off the sticks. I'm indoors right now, so it's not going to be able to connect to the satellites. If you can see down here at the bottom, it's telling me that I'm connected to zero satellites. That's going to stay red until it's connected to enough satellites. If we were to go outside right now, you'll see that number start going up. It'll go to one satellite, two satellites. Once it reaches 10, I believe, that'll change to a new icon. You can also see here we have a message saying take off with caution, no GPS. Again, that's signifying that we're not connected to the GPS network yet. Now, if you're going to be flying indoors, it's never going to connect to GPS.
GPS, but it does have technology built into it to help keep your indoor flight stable. On the bottom here, we have two vision sensors, and that allows the drone to remain stable when flying indoors and you're not connected to GPS. Before we get too much farther here, let's go over a couple other controls and things that we need to know. Down here at the bottom, it gives us some information about our distance and height. This button here is our takeoff button. If we click it, you can see this other little menu pops up and it says press and hold to take off. At the top right hand side it has some more important information. If we click on it, it gives us more detail. It gives us some information about our flight time, our battery temperature, it shows us our GPS strength there. It also shows us our battery remaining. When you're actually flying in the drones up in the air, there'll be a little bit more detailed information there. Over here on the left hand side, you can see there's a P there. That means we're in positioning mode. That's the standard flying mode that you're going to be in most of the time. Now we can click on that. You can see there it's now switched to an S. That means we're now in sport mode. Basically that makes the drone a little bit more agile. You can fly a lot faster. And if we click on it one more time, it's gonna to go to a C. And basically that stands for send smooth mode. That's gonna slow the drone right down. It does allow you to get some really nice smooth cinematic shots. When it comes time to launching the drone, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, like I already showed you there, we can press the takeoff button there. The other way you can do it is by taking your remotes down and then out. That will start up the props as you can see there. And to take off, you just press the left joystick up and let go, and it will go up to about a meter and just hover. And you can see that now that we have the prop started, that takeoff button has turned to a return to home button. We also have one there at the top. When your drone's up in the air, say you're getting a fair ways away, or you've lost it in the sky, and that does happen from time to time. You're not quite sure where it is. All you have to do is press and hold the return to home button, and the drone's gonna come back to where it took off and land safely. Now, I'm gonna shut the props off here, and to do that, I'm just gonna pull the stick down. And you can see there, it shuts right off. So there's a couple things I wanna show you within here in the menu before you do take off. Uh, if we click these three dots in the top right hand corner now the first thing i want to show you here is update home point if you're outdoors flying and you're connected to gps and you take off when you first launch the drone it's going to set a home point and that's going to be basically where the drone took off from so you can go out flying and do whatever and then when you hit the return to home it's going to come back to that point however if you've moved say as you're flying you're walking around a park or wherever you're flying you might be 100 meters away from where you took off from you can come into that settings under shortcuts and update your home point. And that way the drone's gonna come back to that new updated home point and not from where it originally took off. The next we can go over to safety here and you can actually set some limits for yourself. So first off, you can set a max altitude and you can set a max distance. If you're worried about getting too far or too high, you could set some limits there and the drone won't go past them. But the really important one here that I always recommend is the return to home altitude. I think by default it's set at 20 meters, uh, but the thing you gotta remember is say you're 100 or 200 meters out and you hit that return to home button, the drone is gonna race to that altitude first, straight up, and then it's gonna come home. So you wanna set that higher than the tallest obstacle. For example, if you've got trees that are 30 meters or 40 meters tall, you wanna make sure you set your return to home taller than the tallest obstacle. Right now I put it up to 58 meters. I usually set mine fairly high like that, and that way I know for sure it's gonna bypass anything that could be in its way. Now there's a ton of different settings and things you can go in and look at and change and tweak the way that you like them. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but uh, another important one here I do wanna show you is find my drone. Say you happen to be flying and the drone clips a tree branch and uh, falls to the ground. Sometimes they can be tricky to find, especially if it's a fair distance away from you. You can go into the find my drone and it's gonna show you on the map where it's located. You can also click this button here You can see that it's gonna make the drone start beeping and flashing a light. So that makes it a little bit easier to find as well. Now a couple more things on the right hand side, those are our camera controls. And if we hit that top button there, you can see we can switch back and forth between photo and video. Each one of those comes with its own settings that you can change. For example, when we're in video, we can record at 1080 or we can record at 2.7K. Well, folks, that's basically it for my beginner's guide. At this point, it's just a matter of learning to fly, getting comfortable with the drone. When you're going to go out flying for the first time, definitely make sure you find a nice big wide open field with no trees or no obstructions. Before you worry about recording and get nice cinematic shots, just get comfortable with the sticks first. Play around with them to see what they do and how the drone moves and get comfortable with it. I'll just give you a brief description of what the sticks do. We'll talk about the right stick here first. If we push it forward, that's going to send the drone forward. If we pull it back, that's going to bring the drone back. If we put it left, the drone is going to go left. 
if we go right, the drone is going to go right. The left stick here, if we press it up, that's your altitude, so the drone is going to raise. If we pull it down, the drone is going to come down. If we go side to side, that's going to spin the drone. So it's just a matter of playing around with those sticks and getting comfortable with them. Hopefully you found this video enjoyable and useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.